to painting. It's a new day and I have my paint brushes here and I'm ready to paint in these little mice from last time. I'm sorry, there's a shadow being cast. I have the light over here on this side and then I have another camera so the camera's kind of blocking the view. I'll try to move that over a little bit. I don't know how people... Oh, that's better. Yay. Okay, so I have to paint my mice. Just a recap. I have my color comp that I'm looking at and um, I'm using my color charts that I've made previously to figure out my colors to make sure they match um yeah so I'm gonna get started um doing some painting of that oh as far as like some of these little details like the scarf and the teacup uh those are gonna be separate pieces and the scarf I'm doing like crochet and I'm doing a little bit of crochet this is gonna be fabric anyway so I'm super excited about that so I'm gonna get to started the painting on this so anyways I'm trying out a new video setup because I thought oh wouldn't it be interesting if there were different camera <laughs> camera angles um, also um, just to kind of have something different when I'm doing the video editing part of it but anyways I'm having my morning coffee just black black coffee um, get those colors going so I'm doing this okay I think I'm gonna look here and I think we need a sepia and a scarlet so Here's my scarlet. If you can see that. Okay. I'm gonna do the sepia. This is a little bit redder. I've noticed in each type of bottle it can be slightly different. So this one's a little bit more brown looking to me. shake it up a little bit since I'm drinking coffee one of the biggest things is I've got to really make sure I don't put my paintbrush in my coffee cup I am terrible about that it's like I'm gonna move the water over here so hopefully I won't do that so my brush is wet and all I'm doing is I'm gonna take a little bit of this and then a little bit of this I always mention to students, it's about really about how much water you're putting in to get a lighter value with this. And then I have my scrap piece of watercolor paper so I can test it out. And does it need to go a little redder? Yeah, maybe a little bit, just a little bit. Yeah, that's the ticket. Okay, so that's where I want to be at. I'm going to rinse out my paintbrush and then I'm going to go over here. And I am going to add the water. And I always extend out. This is actually a separate piece. Like I realized, so I added like a quarter of an inch. It's like the things you realize that you made mistakes and you could still save it. I know his face is gonna have that same color in the hand. So now I'm gonna go in with that color. I'm just going to paint that in. And I'm going to do the little hand. Sweet. All right. Could be a little bit stronger on the color, so I can just a little bit more red. Give it a little pop. And the reason why the pop is because they're supposed to be the focal point. So if I add a little bit more of that scarlet, I think that's going to be help. Pop 
a little bit. It's always hard. It's like finding that balance. But I do feel like it needs that pop. I don't know, maybe a little bit more. Because in the original one, I have it. I feel like it pops a little bit more. I made this hand so tiny. I, could, I still feel like I could use a little bit more. shadow here so it's always funny because you could do it flat I know some people just do flat color but I always like to do a little bit to accentuate where a shadow might be because I'm hoping it'll push it even more when I layer the pieces um, that's completely up to you you know some people just they don't even cut the pieces there's you know it's really such a personal preference on the way you like it I just realized I just had done ones that were just kind of flat, but the more I kind of pieced the pieces together, I like that paper doll kind of effect. And that's just, once again, that's a personal thing. Okay, so the other mouse is going to be more of a gray, like a warm grayish. Okay, I have to let that dry because I wanted to put in a little bit more pink in there. This one over here, I want it to be a warm kind of or actually a cool, I apologize, cool. So I think I'm going to use a little bit of, let's look at my chart here, a kind of a cool gray. So that could be a Payne's gray, or it could be, oh, process with the sepia. So because of my color chart, I'm digging this right here. This is kind of somewhat close. So this is a process cyan and a sepia. I'm going to shake my bottle up for De La Rowney. And then I already have the sepia on there, so it's a matter of blending. I think I want it to be a little bit. Oh, that's kind of nice. So then I'm just going to swatch it. Yeah, that's the money. So then I'm just going to go ahead and clean off my brush because I don't want to... I mean, I don't mind a little bit of color because it's almost like it gives it a little bit of a tone, but I kind of... So if my water is a little bit contaminated, that's okay. I'm going to extend that out. Use it for the little pause. And then I can go in and paint. So much fun. I find painting to be very kind of relaxing. I can listen to music, a podcast. I was actually listening to a podcast earlier and, um, I, but I'm video recording, so I don't know, I guess I turned it off. Okay, that part's done. Then I'm gonna go in because I want this to feel like it goes together more, like as far as the color, so I'm gonna take that cyan, but now I want to increase that sepia. And then I'm going to do the hair. And this is once again this thing of trying to make the characters feel a little bit different from each other. So that's fine. Okay, this shoulder in my little. Hold on, I think he's like a blue yeah so I want a little bit more of the cyan and this time I'm just gonna go in with this can be really strong I'm okay with that so I'm really pushing to have this to have more saturation than this so hopefully that'll make it pop there we go all right so now I have to I can let that dry and I can move on to his clothing so the clothing here I have him with a really pretty purple and I'm gonna use this really nice 
purple lake color. I need to get some ultramarine blue. I realized like there's certain blues I didn't have and the ultramarine blue, I need to get that. So, so many things to buy. New brushes, new paint colors. Anyway, so did a little shaking. I'm gonna put that aside. Okay, now it's time to go ahead and Okay, so I'm going to paint the purple all the way up because I know the scarf is going to go over him. Literally. So I need a smaller brush because he starts getting kind of tiny here. That. That. In my original, this was like darker but I'm kind of hoping to do yeah kind of like this so it's okay so it's like he doesn't have a neck but the scarf is gonna cover it up and now I'm gonna paint this arm in see this is why I love these watercolor acrylic inks like it takes like two coats and then I'm like boom the color's so bright it's vibrant it's, it's, it's delightful look at that it pops okay I might still go darker with that and you know what I think I want to go in with a little bit of this purple and I kind of want to highlight that hair it's a little too monochromatic and who says a mouse can't have purple hair? Let me swatch it, make sure I'm okay with that. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Because it's not going to look purple. It's going to look more like a brown gray. Sweet. Okay. Now I'm going to do the little helmet. And I know that is more of a golden color for the goggles. And I think I like the idea of a scarlet and a brilliant yellow. And I am starting to run out of this yellow. I really like this yellow. It's kind of that golden yellow, just a little bit of that. And it, it's like you don't really need a lot. A lot goes a long way. And so now I'm going to like add water. <gasps> See, I hate that when that happens. So I got to quickly, like, if you spill some paint and you don't notice before it dries, you can blot it out. You really don't want to blot it, but I just kind of, because sometimes it just causes it to spread. So that's the dangers of having your water bottle, water over there on that side. So let me move it over. Okay. Okay, and then now I can do the brown, and that brown, oh no, it's a green. It's a green that matches his hair. So it, the the scarf, I'm so sorry. It is a emerald green. And that's why I do the comps, because then I stay on track on what I was planning on doing. Otherwise, I'd be like, ah, I, I do feel like that's why it helps you remember. What was I thinking? Why did I do that? Oh my gosh. I'm going to fill that with. I like the idea of this bright saturated because I got the thread to match um, this paint. So I think it's gonna... There we go. And then I have to let that dry because I'll be tempted to go in and start adding more shadow or so, but I'm gonna let it dry. Okay, so that's that part of it so this was a lot quicker I need to go back in and do the ears I could do that now and so with the ears like I said I like the scarlet but then I like a process magenta yeah process magenta because it looks more pink I don't know to me it reads orange if you don't mix it with the process magenta with the scarlet it just 
which is not, you know, if you want that, but I kind of wanted a little bit more of a pink. So I'll take those two and I blend them together and it kind of gives me more of a rose. Yeah, that's the ticket. And so that is what I like, you know, and like I said, it's a personal preference. And now I'll go back in and I will wet in the center of this ear. I can pick it up from the paper because sometimes if I'm just starting out, see, now I'll go back with a stronger color. And this is one of those things I am going to go do that. And then I have to do the cheeks. I do need to get it wet. I want that kind of bleeding edge that I need to do. And then I blot it because sometimes it just gets a little too much. for this now this goes on top so it doesn't matter it's gonna hide that so I love that about this it's like you can hide so many things just I always think it's like having that illusion it's like the magic of hiding it and making it still read the way you want it to okay I missed a spot on the sleeve and I might go back and then just pump this even more to kind of make it look like a shadow so almost and then put this one darker like I said if I go outside of it that's why I like this is like if I go outside of the edge like that I can just cut it off so anyways so now this is letting it dry all the way I'm oh actually I could go a little darker there so that's something I just so now I've got to go back to my palette Watch it. Oops. Ooh. There we go. All right, um, I could do a little bit more dimensional on him because the shadow's coming this way. So this is one of those things I'm going to add a little bit more shadow down here. Mainly it's just to kind of emphasize the little guy's expression and fear and worry because that would be me. That would be me. More shadow. Shadow, shadow. Ugh. This brush is not held up as well as I thought it would be for as expensive as it was. It sometimes it breaks a little bit. Now I'm like cleaning that up. All right. Uh, losing a little bit of the cuteness in the cheeks, so I'm going to go back in. Oh, it's too strong. So I'm going to go back in and clean that off. There we go. Alright, so that's a matter of letting that dry. And then I will maybe do a little bit of touch up because I do want to add a little bit more to that helmet. Man, is it dry? It's always this, is it dry? And so I see I, one of my favorite greens is if I mix sepia and the emerald green, I get this kind of olive green. Okay, so now I'm just going to swatch that. Voila. 
Okay, so all the pieces are painted. I'm feeling good about this. I still have to do the fabric cutting. So I think in the next video, it'll either be cutting this or I'll be cutting fabric. And that requires a pattern. I do like mixed media. This is just me personally, because I think literally it's all the years that I was an art teacher and I've been an art teacher. I still am an art teacher, but it's the joy of like different textures, different, um, whether it's real or implied, because at the end of the day, it becomes implied when I actually photograph it. But I love that tactileness of something that is from the real world into my illustration work. And I feel like it creates this lovely contrast between the things that are paper, the things that are lid, 